Welcome. I'm Siwa Pili Rose Amador Lebeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, my guest today is Val Lopez. He is chairman of the Ama Mutsun Tribe, Tribal Band. Tribal Band. Tribal Band. And uh, I had asked him to come to update us on a lot of projects he's working on. And um, tell us, Val. We're, oh. we're, what are you working on now? And uh, give us an update on some of the things we, you talked about on, on the last show. Okay. Well, first I want to say thank you to Native Voice again for, for inviting and welcoming me here. Thank you very That's much, sure. Rose. And um, well, our, our tribe is very active, as you know. And first of all, our tribe um, is comprised of the, the descendants of the indigenous people that were taking the mission, San Juan Batista and Santa Cruz. Um, currently, our tribe is pretty involved in a number of things. Number one is trying to protect our most sacred site. Our most sacred mountain is at the very south end of Gilroy. So that is in Santa Clara County then, right? That is in Santa Clara County. <clears throat> and. Um, it's also at the very tail end of the Santa Cruz Mountains. And there's a ranch there that is known today as Sergeant Ranch. But to our people, it's known as Eurostock. And Eurostock translates to the place of the big head. And that's where our big head dances. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's where we held our big head dances. And our big head dances were our most important and, and most sacred uh, dances and such, and that's a very important sacred site. And we had four villages. Is that a ceremonial dance? The Big Head, it's a type of dance. Okay. Yes, it is a type of dance. Okay. And we had four villages there at Eurostock as well, and, and they were to ensure that the grounds were, you know, that the, that the area was, was maintained as sacred, and to um, also to take care of the environment there regarding the water, the plants, the wildlife, etc. cetera. Uh, today, it's recognized as an important uh, wildlife corridor. And that corridor is from the Santa Cruz Mountains south to the Gabalon Mountains and also west to the Diablo Range. So it's a very important um, wildlife um, co uh, corridor. In 2015, a person submitted an application to do sand and gravel mining of our most sacred site and to, and to uh, basically strip mine um, four sacred mountains. And so since that time, we've been fighting very hard to, um, to, to prevent that mining permit from being approved. What's the status of it right now? Yes, the mining permit is um, they're doing the draft EIR now, and they've been working on this for a year and a half, two years. And, um, and we requested consulting under AB 52. And under AB 52, uh, we requested that there be an ethnographic study, which was completed. And it will show Eurostock as a very important and sacred site to the Amamutsen. But now, the, the county regulations allow this permit to be approved. Did the county approve the permit? Well, it hasn't been approved yet. You know, they're going to release the draft EIR probably towards the end of the year or early next year. And then there's a chance for public comment. So we would like all the viewers on this uh, program now, you know, to comment on that and say that the Native American spirituality must be, um, pr you know, um, protected and recognized on equal to all the other religions. If this was a Mormon or Catholic or, right. or Jewish or any other religion, they would not even consider doing this mining permit. But because we're federally unrecognized, they think that they can, you know, that our territories aren't, aren't, aren't important and are protected, which is basically, for them, not protected is true. So the only thing that's going to stop this mine is overwhelming public support. So you and so that's what we're asking we'll for. The, uh, site that they can go to to get more information to where to send the letters, right? Yes. Okay. We have a website dedicated to this, and that's protecteurostock.org. Um, okay. And uh, there they have a petition. We ask everyone to please sign the petition. We also um, ask for letters of support, and we tell you where to mail them. And we have a lot of sample letters there. Oh, and, uh, th and then you can check a box to stay updated for this, because we're going to start having public um, 
um, support events coming up in the near future. Well, we and we have something in, over here in Santa Clara County, maybe at the Board of Supervisors. We absolutely will. Good. Good. Yeah, there's going to be two votes here. One vote is going to be before the, um, the planning commissioners. Okay. And then they'll make a recommendation to the County Board of Supervisors, and then that'll be the second um, um, meeting that they'll have that we're going to ask the public to show up to as well. Oh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will that happen this year? No, it'll be next year. Next year. We're quite good. sure of that. So we can have masses out there because right now with COVID, and actually one of the things for our viewers, um, we we're both vaccinated and I would encourage you to be vaccinated like we are, but that's why we don't have the screen between us or our masks on today because we are both vaccinated. So yes, mm -hmm. I would encourage all people, especially native people because the COVID has affected so many of our people um, on the different reservations and in mm -hmm. urban areas. And within our tribe as well, we it's been, um, pretty devastating to our tribe. So we, um, we we join you in calling for all people to get yes. vaccinated. And I was vaccinated at the Indian Health Center here in Santa Clara County, and I know they vaccinate a lot of the native people mm -hmm. in the county here, so it's a yeah. great thing. Yeah, and many of our members um, went, went to the center here. Oh, good. Uh, and then um, the one in Oakland as well, and then and the one, of course, in, in the Right, they're doing Fresno. a great job. We're gonna be vaccinating people here at Conexion too in a couple of weeks, so uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I would encourage everyone to get vaccinated. Absolutely, thank you for that. So oh, so the, you were saying that they're gonna be doing rallies and so forth. Um, I wanted to ask you about the Mission Bells. I know that's a project you've worked on and you did. You were successful in getting one or more of the Mission Bells removed. Can mm -hmm. you tell me about that? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, those mission bells are erected on highway or the, on, on what they call the El Camino Real, mm -hmm. and and it's kind of um, another example of total destruction and domination. Those mission th th that El Camino Real is actually built on a very important indigenous trade route. All the major highways are built on a, on, on important indigenous trade routes. And so, you know, but whenever they come, you know, our people used it for thousands and thousands of years, these trade routes, but they come in and they call it El Camino Real, the highway of the, of, of the king, you know? And that, again, is destroying our identity and our culture and, um, and, 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 and our people who lived here before and such like that. So that's just devastating. But whenever they, but in the early 1900s, 1902 or thereabouts, it was decided they would put a mission bell at every one, approximately one mile, north and south, on what is now known as Highway 101. Mm -hmm. And those mission bells are still standing there. Amen. And for us, it's just a constant memory, a reminder rather, of the history, that brutal history of the mission that sought to destroy our, our spirituality, our culture, our environments, our indigenous knowledge and uh, and our humanity, and we didn't, you know, and it's time for that um, um, constant reminder at every one mile mark on the highway uh, to be removed, because that is a false history. That is a brutal history that should never be recognized as something that is grand or glorious or honorable. You know, it, it included genocide, and uh, it included. Um, you know, period. You know, uh, uh, rape. It included uh, whippings, um, slavery, um, um, incarceration, and and death. Right. And so, why you know why is that being honored in the state of California? And they have to recognize that. And so we found uh, in, in, uh, uh, we do a lot with UC Santa Cruz mm -hmm. since we had the connection to Santa Cruz, and there was a mission bell on campus. So we worked with the the. Um, um, the, the administration there um, requesting the bow be removed, and it was removed. It was removed last year, I believe, perhaps the year before. And uh, the city of Santa Cruz had two mission bows there. And so we were working with the city to request that those two be removed. 
Uh, but last year when they started taking down the statues and stuff like that, someone uh, took, the took, took the mission bow and we were, <laughs> wow. and we don't know who it was, we, you know, we personally, we, you know, we, you. We, <laughs> yeah, we, so we say thank you, but we, you know, yeah. but we don't want to know who it is because we want to have that deniability, you know, but, right. but uh, we do say thank you to them. And then the third bow mm -hmm. is, um, on, it's on public. Uh, it's on public land, city property line, and we asked the city to remove that, and they approved it. They passed a resolution to remove the mission bell, and so um, we were looking for a date that to have the mission bell removed, and that date is going to be August 28th, and that's a significant day, because that is the um, the date that um, Mission um, Santa Cruz was founded in um, in 1791. So that'll be the 251th year um, anniversary. For Do you know how many there are in Santa Clara County? Well, I really mile. don't. <laughs> yeah, it'd be every mile. But then other, but there, there, there are also, a lot of them are on city properties, county properties, and, and others. And we're saying they need to be removed, right. you know. Um, you know, I mean, the, it, it, we parallel this to the Confederate um, uh, statues and stuff like that. I mean, it's just a a, a, um, a brutal reminder of the of the colonizers, of those who who dominated and destroyed the indigenous people, and, and that doesn't they, need to be they honored. They build the missions for them, mm -hmm. the slaves. Absolutely. And they, and they died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at Mission San Juan Batista, for example, uh, just that mission alone. Um, they said um, in, in 1823, the superiors of the mission system in Mexico City sent out a interrogatio or, or a questionnaire or survey. And on that right there, that one of the questions they asked, how many Indians have died at your mission? And uh, the priest answered, 19,421 Indians died at Mission San Juan Batista. And there was still another 10 years to go before that mission closed. And, and you know, and, and, and so that's not a, a system that needs to be honored. And, and those mission bells need to be taken down and we want the public to become aware of it. So we have that event planned in Santa Cruz. We're inviting the public to come and stand with us and say enough. It's time for the true history to be told. It's time for that brutality to be acknowledged. It's time for, for um, to help the native people heal mm -hmm. um, from the truth, you know, and, and, and to have the truth told about them. And, and um, at this, you know, and, and that's, that's what we're calling on there on that day. And then we're gonna also ask that all the mission bells on Highway 101 and anywhere else on public property be removed. That's wonderful. And then they put that Jennifer Sarah on the freeway and- Yes. <sighs> Did they take yeah. him down? No, that on, on the on the 280 yeah. up up north, yeah, yeah. No, it, it is still there, and uh, the 280, I believe, is actually called the Unipro Sarah Freeway. Oh you know, and so everywhere it's just um, you reminders, know that 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 that, that 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 and then it's the, you know it always bothered me that the kids in school had to build missions. Mm hmm. Yeah. And they glorified it. Absolutely. And it's all lies. It's all lies. I mean, the person that wrote that book, um, uh, 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 an American catastrophe, uh, uh, American genocide, uh, the catastrophe of the California Indians. His name is Benjamin Madley. He wrote a really um, impactful and powerful article on California missions being the first uh, place of and representing nothing but mass incarceration. And um, he put that in an article, and people can find that article online if they were if they were to look for it. And that's an article that we highly recommend to find out um, what the missions were like there, you know. So um, um, the the you know the, the, uh, what I was going to say is the last padre presidente of the California mission system. Um, his name was Mariano. Um, Payeres. Uh, when their missions were closing, he wrote to his superiors in Mexico City and says, we need to find a way to explain what has happened here. All we have done 
was um, baptize the Indians, administer some sacraments, and bury the Indians. He says there's no more Indians left along the coast, and we are going to be judged harshly and with scorn. And so with that, they started developing the, 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 the phony excuse or the lies or the alibi that the Indians came to the mission voluntarily. That wasn't true. That the Indians came to find God. That wasn't true. That they came to find a better life. That they came to learn agriculture and on and on. And then whenever they were developing the school curriculum, they wanted to tell the mission history, mm. who do they go ask? They go ask the, the Franciscan priest, right. um, and they don't ask the, the indigenous people, and that's what we have to live, we've been living with that um, false history for 200 years now. Now, it was my understanding that, like at um, San Juan Bautista, at the mm. mission, they have some Indians buried there, but those were only the ones who accepted the religion? Is that true? The ones who wouldn't, they... Absolutely true. And, and, and that's been true probably throughout time, that to be buried in a Catholic cemetery, you must, you, you must, you must be Catholic. And that meant for the, for the Indians, they must have been baptized. You had to have been baptized to be buried in that, in that, in, in that mission uh, cemetery. And so of 19,421 Indians died in San Juan Batista, but there's only 3,400 uh, 3, buried in the back. You know, I mean, uh, where's grave. the rest in a mass grave? Where are the rest? You know? Right, right. Yeah. No, it's a shameful history. And I think it was uh, Elias uh, Castillo's book where he said they separated the men from the women so they wouldn't hear them, the screams and so forth. Yes, they separated the men from the women from the children. But a big reason for that is because they, you know, they were trying to get them to accept Catholicism and to accept becoming citizens of Spain. And if they could convert to both of those, then they can get their families back together. So it was a lot of pressure on them, a forced conversion. You know, to bring the, the only way they can come back with their families if they accepted that conversion. And, um, and so many uh, of, uh, of, of our ancestors refused to accept that conversion, and they, were do and, they, and they were killed. And that's what the Doctrine of Discovery says. The, the Doctrine of Discovery was issued by Pope Fran uh, by, by um, I forget the Pope's name, in 1453. You know, and it says the indigenous people in these newly discovered lands um, were to accept conversion or they were to be killed. And that's one of the reasons your tribe is not recognized, because they killed so many, and a lot of the California tribes, right? Because mm -hmm. they killed so many people, they said, oh, they're gone. Yeah, right? yeah, there are no Indians here. I mean, that Krober in his handbook of California tribes that was published in um, 1928, you know, it says that there are no Ohlone's, that are an extinct tribe. And, um, and so because of that, the federal government didn't think that, tri that recognition was, was needed. They still believe that. Still Although we did sign a treaty in 1851 that would have um, uh, allowed us to be, a, had us be a, a federally recognized tribe today. But the state of California sabotaged that treaty. You know, after that treaty were negotiated and signed by the tribes and signed by um, the, the commissioners, it was sent back to Washington, D.C. to be ratified. But the um, state of California, they did not want those treaties. They did not want reservations. They wanted extermination. And so what they did is they passed a resolution asking the Senate the U.S. Senate and the governor and the president to not ratify the treaties, and with that uh, resolution, they sent a lobbying effort delegation back, and they lobbied, and that's when the president ordered that our treaties not be ratified to be sealed for 50 years. But it was the state of California that um, that sabotaged the Indian treaties. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's what should be in the history books. Absolutely. No, we're fighting for that now. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, so you're, and there was another project you're working on. Um, can you tell me about that? You... 
Well, what I thought to be, I'd, I'd, I'd like to talk about is um, <clears throat> Governor Newsom, um, uh, uh, more than a year ago, issued an apology to, to the California Indians. And, um, and then he called for a Truth and Healing Council. Wait, what was that supposed to do? Or was it supposed, you know, mm -hmm. it just... Uh, well, that council has been established, uh -huh. you know. Um, but I want to give a little background to that yeah. first, if you okay. don't mind. Yes, please. Well, so we established the, um, so we started holding truth um, um, he wellness meetings more than 12 years ago. And those right there, I, 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 I firmly believe that's the most important thing our tribe has ever done. Uh, we could be there, we talk about historic trauma, we talk about our culture, our spirituality. Uh, we can have 110 to 130 members attend our wellness meetings. And then we started dealing with other issues that are the result of historic trauma. And that could be, a that includes addiction, um, suicide, violence, incarceration, and, um, and on and on on that. And, and stuff, so we wrote a letter to the governor and told him you know, that we do not accept apologies. But the Truth and Healing Council, it has to be something where they have to actually deal with the past. They cannot just say, let's find a path forward. Mm -hmm. There is no path forward without, he, without recognizing that, that, that brutal history from the past and, re, and, re, and uh, recovering from that. And, um, you know, and I say that, you know, our, the, the perpetrators need a lot more healing than the indigenous people as well. Some education too. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And so healing includes from our, you know, what we've learned with our wellness centers, I mean our wellness meetings rather, are telling the truth. That's just the basic, learning, the, you know, learning, and t learning and telling the truth about our history, about our people, our culture, our spirituality. Is it all native people? Yes, it's only for tribal members. On the council? Yeah, the, uh, on, uh, no, on, 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 on our wellness meeting. meeting. Now, no, yes. No, this thing. Yeah, well, the, the, <laughs> the, um, the governor, you know, along with his apology, he called for a truth and healing council. Right, and I'm saying is that native people? That's all native that's people, all native yes. From California? Yes, yeah, and they represent all districts and they, they have um, a number of un, un, unrecognized um, tribal members there as well. Interestingly, I asked to be a member of that council, and my name wasn't selected. And um, too controversial. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, as I say, you know, I mean, I, you know, they know what kind of truth and healing they want, and the mm -hmm. truth and healing that I recommend or propose, they're not interested so, in that, obviously. Yeah, no, they kind of just want to find a, you know, let's just forgive and forget and go forward in a good way, you know. And as I say, that that's that's not possible. It's too easy. Yeah, yeah. There's no accountability there, and there's no justice. Right. And um, et cetera. And you know, whenever in 2015, when the Pope apologized to the indigenous people of the Americas, I wrote him a letter and I told him, we do not accept your apology. I says, well, you know, I grew up Catholic, <clears throat> unfortunately, and I learned that, you know, according to the teachings of the church, to be forgiven for your sins, you have to confess your sins, you have to do penance, and then you have to atone for your sins. If I was to walk into a confessional booth as a child and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, you know, that, that would never work, you know. And so, the, you know, why should the church expect anything, why should the Pope expect a, anything different? You know, he wants to just uh, give an apology and say let, things are good now. So um, at Truth and Healing, we're keeping an eye on it, but in all honesty, we don't have a, a lot of hope or faith um, that it's, that it's going to do the work it, it, it's, it's supposed paper. to do. Yeah, yeah. Sure, that's too bad. So um, we want you to keep us posted on all these different projects so the community can support you on this, you know, because I know 
with the uh, mission bells and then the uh, the land down in uh, South uh, Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure people want to be involved in that. Thank you. We need their support. So we'll, we'll be putting uh, the contact uh, information on the screen so people will know about it and hopefully people will support it. I don't know if you noticed my beautiful earrings. Did you? I've been watching. Them? I've been noticing <laughs> them. Yes, I have. They are gorgeous. They were made by Kathy Peltier. And she is uh, Leonard Peltier's daughter, and we mm -hmm. all know who Leonard Peltier is. She said she's going to have the opportunity to visit him, and it's been an awfully long time. I know it's been many, many years since she's even been able to visit with him. And I'm hoping it happens. Mm -hmm. And she was uh, selling earrings and other jewelry her and uh, her mother were making to uh, raise some funds to help with her trip. Um, but uh, she, I... Uh, She's on Facebook and she posts a lot of the uh, jewelry she makes and she I know she made some for missing uh, and murdered indigenous women mm -hmm. uh, with a hand on it and I have some of those but she just makes beautiful jewelry. Absolutely. And, uh, definitely want to support her. But thank you all for joining us. We'll keep in touch with Val and find out where he's at, what we can do to help. And uh, see you next time on Native Voice TV. Oh,